Hi everyone, my name is Thomas LeFerrier. I'm a project manager at Making Sense International and I'm here to help facilitate the Raising Youth Voices, Strategies for Meaningful Youth Engagement in Youth Employment Initiatives. Um, I'd just like to go over a couple of quick ground rules for everyone. Um, if you could please stay muted and please keep your video off during the session, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, we encourage you to use the chat um, if you have any questions that come up. Um, and we'll also be having breakout sessions where there will be three different breakout rooms where everyone will be distributed at random. Um, and in those sessions, again, we encourage you to use the chat function as well uh, as using your microphone and video to actively participate. Um, should you have any technical issues, also use the chat to message me. Um, I'll try and do my best to facilitate. Um, but with that, I would like to hand it over to our panelists. Um, and I would like to introduce John True, who is the Global Head of Skills and Opportunities for Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship with Plan International. So with that, um, John. There we go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending upon where you are. I'm John True, and I'm the Global Head of Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship with Plan International, and I'm based in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, it's the end of the day for us, and so um, it's a very exciting time for us uh, with this research and where we are. But during these difficult times, now more than ever, um, is it important for us to really stop, relax, put down our gadgets, breathe, and simply listen to young people. Young people have significant and dramatic stories to tell as a result of COVID-19. The impact of COVID-19 on youth employment and youth economic opportunities is still not fully known. Um, prior to COVID-19, 126 million young people around the world were already engaged in extreme and moderate poverty. Uh, poverty, with an estimate of 77% of young workers in the informal sector. These economic insecurities born from the pandemic are expected to persist until the next three to five years. As we address these implications, which greatly affect the lives of young people, there are opportunities across the horizon as we build back better from this pandemic. I have the pleasure um, today of hosting um, this panel and looking at uh, some of the key and emerging um, nuggets of information and learnings that we have been looking at in terms of a global research project uh, with uh, the Global Funders Group for Youth Employment and Citibank. Um, and this has been an important project and one that came up as we, uh, the COVID-19 emerged onto the global stage. So we have some understandings of that. But at this time, I wanted to introduce to you some of those individuals who've really made it possible um, and have been meaningful participants in this research, um, given how they've come to us uh, at Plan International. First, it's I Iris Kaluag. She's the Youth Employment Solutions Program Officer uh, based in Manila with Plan International. Christian Manaha is also from the Youth Employment Solutions team and is a young professional who specifically was working on the white paper and the roadmap ahead. And Eric, Erica Menendez is also the Youth Employment Solutions Program Implementation and Support Coordinator, who helps coordinate our work um, in Manila, where our research is based. So on behalf of Plan International, uh, we welcome you to this session. Um, and this is a learning session for us as well, just as much about um, the research that we are currently engaged in and also getting your insights and your understandings about um, the research uh, initial findings and some of the preliminary um, uh, directions of travel that we're looking at as a result of this. Uh, next slide. So today we're going to be looking at um, the session agenda. And the session agenda is really composed of, we're going to be talking about the project background, taking some information about that, and then looking at uh, the reflections from the white paper and understanding what has the research told us, what is the literature review, what is our uh, key informant interviews, 
um, along with the desk research, um, has provided ample information, um, but also identified some key challenges and weaknesses. We'll also be looking at <laughs> breakout discussions, where each of these uh, young professionals who are intricately wedded to this project uh, we'll be facilitating discussions on key critical questions that we are engaged in um, and looking at as part of this research. And then we'll be looking at um, some final thoughts and discussions today. Next. So we look at the project funders and looking at the understanding of the context in which this research came about. And I, we think it's very important to really understand that the Youth Employment Funders Group, who have um, commissioned this research, along with Citibank, is a, is a collection of organizations that have come together to really look at influencing and understanding what works and what doesn't work um, in the area of youth employment from a knowledge-based perspective. The purpose of the group is really to capitalize on those multiple experiences of each of the organizations and to increase uh, the knowledge base uh, at the global level. The Youth Employment Funders Group is headed by a steering committee, which is comprised of the City Foundation, USAID, Inter-American uh, Development Bank Lab, ILO, and the MasterCard Foundation. And so these organizations came together in May of 2019 to really understand and begin to plot out what is the context of youth employment um, and young people's engagement in those initiatives, whether it's started at the strategy level all the way to the monitoring and evaluations. We've seen um, youth, uh, youth, meaningful youth engagement across that spectrum that has really uh, challenged some of the identities and some of the assumptions that we had going into this. In response, to the growing evidence of youth engagement as a critical piece of youth employment programs, uh, the funders group commissioned this research funded by the city foundation uh, and is currently being implemented by Plan International and ISIC International. And this research, we're also trying to, as we, be, as we continue to engage in this research, understand what we're learning and how can we put that uh, learning into action uh, within, the, within the project itself. Continue on. Next slide, please. Yeah, there we go. So within the project, um, the research has really looked at two um, fundamental uh, core questions um, that have guided our work. And those were really around uh, understanding what were the key phases of youth engagement across the design, implementation, monitoring, uh, and evaluation, and the governance of these programs. And also, which concrete steps can youth employment funders take to strengthen their own youth engagement strategies? Because for us, it's not just about what we've identified in the research, but where is this research going to take us? How is this research going to influence uh, future financial uh, allocations within the sector? And how can we be part of that in bringing uh, young people to a shared responsibility and a shared understanding um, that they do have significant impact um, on the outcomes of what we're looking at. Next. Next, we looked at the methodology of how this project came about. What was very important to us was to look at the existing literature to help us find out um, and put together a conceptual framework about meaningful youth engagement and youth employment initiatives. This framework uh, that was designed is currently being tested throughout the primary data collection process. And we're just uh, almost at the end of that primary data collection process. And that framework is, um, will be evaluated for its utility and efficacy uh, within the project. Uh, this is an exciting tool, I think, um, and a value addition that the research may, uh, that may be of use uh, for others in the sector. It emphasizes uh, that the data correlating for meaningful youth engagement and youth employment uh, is very, very limited from our review uh, in relation to its impact on labor markets. 
through, the, through our primary data collection process, we have been engaging in uh, key informer interviews and roundtable discussions aimed at the insights from uh, key actors and key funders, along with implementers and young people themselves to really uh, test and push our understanding about uh, the issue of meaningful youth engagement across the spectrum. What has also been important is the diversity with which we have looked at in terms of young people's engagement in this process. And some of the key things that uh, we've come to learn is that many of the young people became involved in uh, secondary uh, interventions as a result of their first intervention um, in the Youth Employment Project. So we, see all, we saw young people who were continuing either in alumni activities, staff trainings, or uh, mentors in the projects uh, in which they were initially enrolled as beneficiaries. Um, a lot of the young people uh, showed uh, significant frustrations about how adults saw them uh, in, in youth engagement as a tool. Um, and this came across quite strongly. Um, and it, um, it really got to the point um, in understanding that what young people were telling us is that they were, they were fed up uh, with uh, token participation in many cases, um, given that their specific insights and learning as a result of this uh, of their engagement has really changed them and given them uh, a new sense of direction. And I think that is what is one of the key uh, important findings for me is really around uh, listening and showing empathy. Um, in terms of the research and, and in doing the research, we've begun to sort of uh, begin to understand what are those small wisdoms or kernels of information that we need to tease out and understand um, in terms of uh, doing deep dives into the speci uh, specificities um, of the different uh, diverse young people who are participating in the project. Some of the youth involved um, in the youth employment programs recommended greater investment in creating and maintaining peer groups to support mechanisms as well as fostering an enabling environment. And we have seen this in many cases um, from other programs in which alumni networks have been vital to uh, the sustainability of uh, the initiative, but also to providing a support mechanism and career understanding um, and career transition. We also found out key emerging insights from other stakeholders, specifically um, our adult insights um, and the growing realization um, that as, um, as the key uh, drivers um, and actors within the enabling environment, that youth and youth organizations uh, need to be much more um, integrately wedded to the program uh, cycle, especially in the stages of planning, monitoring and evaluation and governance. These areas really came up to the um, surface in terms of where uh, specific interventions uh, would have the greatest likelihood of success and understanding at those critical moments, um, young people's participation was off, often lacking. Um, there's a growing movement within the investment uh, in adult youth partnerships we're seeing uh, through the uh, uh, involvement of adult allies and power brokers to coach youth in a future. Um, and joining youth employment interventions um, as key allies, as program executives, um, and as uh, key private sector mentors, we're seeing a, a much more closer integration of these adult youth relationships, which are having a significant impact on the quality of programming that's being able to be provided. Uh, next, we looked at some of the uh, common youth engagements um, as adults uh, mentioned as part of the research and most common meaningful youth engagement um, was really around stakeholders uh, participating in m and &E and research and capacity building uh, implementation related activities. Um, it's also important to point out that in terms of our research, um, many of the funders went a step further in saying that if we're really going to be um, looking at meaningful youth engagement mm, across the board, and having an institutional role in terms of the work is that 
the engagement of young people needs to start much, much earlier than at a project level. It needs to focus uh, specifically on the uh, strategic uh, strategies being developed that will guide programs uh, and projects over the lifetime um, of an organizational strategies. Um, and we do have some of the organizations who have been uh, engaged in that work and um, are ready to share their examples with us uh, once the research has been, uh, has been published. We're looking at um, the major findings coming out, hopefully by the end of um, October, uh, and really looking at what is that roadmap ahead for the research? Where is this research going to take us? And the evidence of the value um, of meaningful youth participation and labor markets really is an area where we have to feel that there needs to be um, a much greater attention to um, and a larger um, sector in which young people's um, participation uh, is minimal or even negligible. And we need to understand um, why um, young people's participation um, in labor markets um, is often um, a patchwork um, of in and out and understanding that they are also uh, in many cases seen as expendable by labor markets. And how can we increase the agency uh, and social contract with young people uh, for their continued uh, prosperous participation in the labor markets? Some of our young people um, as part of this project also um, from uh, people with disabilities really had some uh, critical insights uh, that they shared with um, the researchers. And some of those um, were primarily around uh, not being heard. Yet again, this is uh, a returning factor, is that they may have um, been able to talk about their issues, but nobody was truly listening, they thought. Um, and that uh, felt uh, confined to um, a predetermined um, area of engagement in which young people uh, could work uh, in menial tasks and administrative roles. Uh, but a lot of times, uh, many would uh, like to be engaged in much more uh, substantive work. And some of the youth engaged in uh, youth employment programs uh, recommended greater investments um, for uh, the initiatives, uh, given that many of the youth employment initiatives are time bound uh, and last uh, only for a brief period in which uh, the initiatives is uh, seen as a pilot or proof of concept and then looked for scalability uh, and moving on. And so understanding and staying connected was also a major theme that we saw stemming from the research. Um, um, the other thing is that I want to add on is that you, you mentioned something about um, people doing whatever they do and um, we, they, 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 they want to know that will it happen or not, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we are sitting with civilians that wants to um, progress in their life, right? Yeah. And when it comes to sexual and reproductive health, it is a different ball game because um, these girls, oh, the, these girls, and when I say these girls, I mean this woman. These are women that um, have decided I am not gonna, I am not gonna um, depend on the public system. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do things my own way. We need to cater to that market. And that is a market that nobody has been looking after because we look at contraceptives and we're like, ah, taboo. It is not taboo. It is not taboo. And I want to close that off. It is not taboo. Us yes. menstruating every single month is not taboo. Us going to go for um, contraceptive is not taboo. Absolutely. Um, I think you bring up a, a exactly. really interesting 
a, a very interesting point is where are those intersectionalities in which um, programs uh, are, are being executed? And I think we have a lot of information from uh, the literature review uh, that speaks of these things, <coughs> not necessarily in this particular field. And so we really need to do a better job of that. Um, My question. Yep. Yeah. I want to check uh, uh, check on the time and see where we are in terms of um, our flow, um, as we stated. Um, as we talked about the anecdotal evidence. Uh, next slide. So we've reached our poll, our small little poll that we are having um, each of you participate into before we break into um, our breakout sessions. Um, and what makes it difficult for funders, excuse me, I got a pop up <laughs> as a result of having you read the question. What makes it difficult for funders or implementers to engage youth as meaningful partners? Um, you have um, the next couple of seconds, 30 seconds to vote. Um, but what makes it difficult for funders or implementers who are removed from this in many cases? Iris, I'm going to turn it over to you for the poll results. Thanks, John. Um, and thanks for that introduction this morning. Um, as we wait for the poll results to come in, we're seeing that a lot of people are actually filling out multiple answers. Um, so I'm really excited to see what it's going to say in, in five seconds. We have 59% at the moment. Um, if you're still viewing questions, please do fill out, I mean, please do choose your answers. You can answer multiple, cho multiple answers at this point. Your options are differences in priorities, differences in perspectives, differences in capabilities and capacities, the lack of avenue and opportunities for meaningful engagement, the lack of understanding on each on other party and others. Okay, the numbers are slowly climbing up, 66%, and now we have our results. Um, if you're seeing the poll right now, 50% of the respondents um, chose the lack of understanding on the other party. And well, that's followed by 44% of responses saying it's a lack of avenue and opportunities for meaningful youth engagement, which is very interesting because when you look at the program evidence that John was talking about, they seem to be limited to the actual spaces that were created by programs. And so we're really looking forward to the roadmap because we're, we're thinking about how do we make these spaces more accessible, not only to young people, but also to funders and implementers who are keen on working with young people on youth employment related issues. Thanks everyone for participating and thanks John for the, for the preliminary takeaways from the white paper. Um, the next at this point, let's move to the next slide. Since we've moved virtually, um, we've also had to think about how to keep the energy up in the virtual room. So let's try this. Um, for those who are on your mobile phones or your tablets or your screen, I mean your laptops, can you please try and click the link? I mean, copy paste the link that you see on your screen. Um, one of the facilitators will also be sharing it in the chat. This should take you to a mural space um, for our energizer. So if you're seeing this on your screen, the website is um, www.bit.ly slash GYEOS 2020 um, energizer. There you go. So just copy paste from the chat and we'll, we'll see you on mural pretty soon. Um, and for Eka or one of our facilitators, if you could move to mural for the screen share, we can see what we're going to do.
you are having a hard time connecting, just message on the chat as well so we can help you. But if you made it to the mural, what you're seeing is a map, it's the world map. And on the left are instructions. You need to drag one of the stickers that says name and city um, to the country where you're currently at. Um, you also need to, of course, fill out your name and the city where you are um, as you do that um, on the sticker. So in a few seconds, if you do all of these, we should see where people are currently. Okay. If you're having a hard time, just I see your message is already there. Let me see. Can you, to the person who responded, I just sent the link again. Can you try clicking that instead? All right. What do we have here? So we're seeing Jennifer, um, Thomas, um, Sarah G. I'm hoping I'm getting your names right. And Sophia. Let's give... Let's give each other a couple of seconds um, to fill this out, and then we'll see where we all are at the moment. Okay. Again, if you're having a hard time clicking the link, let us know so we can help you. Okay, from the post-its, we're seeing some people are in the US. I think we're still waiting for a couple of people to fill out the sticky notes. To make it more interesting, if you don't want to share where what your city is, you can also just indicate what city you'd like to visit someday when hopefully the lockdown in many of the countries do um, stop and people are allowed to freely travel again whenever or wherever, whenever that may be. Okay. So, Eka, um, can you tell us more about where um, most people are at the moment? Um, okay, hello. Hi. So, um, based on our mural here, we have some people in the U.S. Um, so, Thomas is in Washington and Sarah G is in Baltimore. We also have Jennifer from Atlanta and Hira, Hira from Toronto, and we have some people here. So, um, Miranda, who is currently in Birmingham, 
Mod in Brussels. We also have Claudia, who's in Miami, and Utrecht from the Netherlands. Okay, so we have majority of our um, particip participants from the United States, from the Americas. Matthew Iris. Thanks, Eka, and thanks for everyone to uh, thanks for participating, everybody. Um, I think it kind of makes sense that most of us are on that side of the world, considering most of our colleagues here in this side are probably sleeping already. <laughs> but in any case, thank you for sharing where you are or for sharing where you want to go someday. We're gonna now move to the breakout discussions. Um, I hope that makes you feel comfortable working or talking with other participants. Oh, someone is from the UK. Sorry for your tech issues, but thanks for sharing. Um, we will be splitting you into three groups. Um, and in, in these groups, we'd like you to discuss some questions we've prepared in, um, for, for today's session. Um, if, you, if, you are, if you are going to have technical issues, please do message us in that group instead. Um, and then we will come back to this plenary after 30 minutes. Your facilitators will be for breakout group one, it will be Erica or Eka. Breakout group number two will be Christian or Chan, and I will be facilitating breakout group number three. So we'll see you in that room, um, and we're looking forward to hearing your thoughts on our questions. Okay, hi everybody, welcome back. Um, right now we have 24 participants. I think some might be coming back late, um, but Let's go and just hear from participants who participated in the breakout groups. Um, I hope you had a good conversation with the others. Um, maybe we can hear from the first group uh, what your main takeaways or reflections were. Erica? Okay, hi. So um, I'll share my screen and I'm calling Samanzar and Sophia to um, wrap up our discussion earlier. Sophia and um, Samanzar? So yeah, uh, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you can hear so you. For the first, you. should I read out loud for the, uh, the questions and then go for the answers? Yes, yep. So the first one was how or to what degree does youth engagement improve labor, uh, labor market outcomes? How else does youth engagement add value to youth employment programs? So we started with uh, talking about innovations uh and saying integration of new technologies and readiness of it young people bring more innovations new ideas and uh, they're more prepared uh, using the ict in any given uh, situation and also they bring the enthusiasm uh, that we meant enthusiasm means if you if you want if you ask them to take the risks they are they will be like they are more likely to take the risks than the other generation and trial and error like uh, we try and see and then if not uh, we, we fail then we try again and then youth tend to be the trendsetters because we since we try and see and then uh, go for the best results so you we are the trendsetters here and we see a lot of young people around the world who are the trendsetters now this in this world can we go the next or maybe sophia can tell <laughs> maybe i'm talking too much yeah, would, would you want to go? Uh, no, you, you can continue. It's okay. OK. So the white papers, youth respondents share the realities of what it means to be the shared the table versus being invited to the table. How are the funders and implementers working with young people to be involved in the govern, uh, governance of strategies or programs that target them? So we should, uh, young people should be included from the planning and idea generation stage. I mean, from the very first stage of the uh, program or project or anything that you do uh, with young people. And second point is give them the financial ownership and the accountability. You would give them, if you give them the ownership and then set the accountability process and monitoring process, then it would, it would bring them more uh, meaningful results. 
and uh, it, it was enabling environment to give it means you give them the enabling environment and they give you the results and provide the other point is provide facilities funds and infrastructure to be the social entrepreneur entrepreneurs so i gave the uh, example of if you have a mobile phone tablet or uh, a pc but you don't have internet facilities that what happens most of the time then you don't have the infrastructure to learn something new or to new uh, no, uh, to, to do something new so here comes the government public the ppe private public partnership because uh, you need government's help sometimes uh, private sector's helps definitely and then you do uh, you make the results here sophia can you go the further who wrote this uh, lifelong learning project sorry i'm not uh, with this okay this is just an example thank you Sandra. yeah this is just an example of how we work in guatemala uh, and how we can uh, how we empower youth to help them to empower other youth so we we develop a strategy called youth raise your voice and the youth people were lead uh, dialogues and forums with other youth people and also with key stakeholders and other projects so they um, have a dialogue around education around work around health and they express their needs and finally they have a public a forum at the national level with the participation of the presidents and other key actors and their needs were considered as part of the public policy in the country. Okay. Should yes, we go okay. for the third one? Yes. Um, the third question, please. Okay. Ref I cannot see. Okay, yeah, perfect. Reflecting on the white papers, preliminary findings, how can young people successfully influence decisions on long term funding priorities or funders and implementers. So the first point was uh, by mobilizing more young people's voice bringing major uh, that means bringing majority's voice and collective uh, voices. If I give the example in my country, this, uh, the young people's um, the young people is 62 persons young people of the total population so if we bring more people's voice more young people's voice i mean majority's voice then it may might change the game the second point is a strong collaboration and partnership i gave the example of greta thunberry so i believe my uh, also my fellow young uh, my fellow young friends also believe in uh, climate change is issues but see what what's happening in the global table so we cannot change the decision. We cannot influence the decision. It depends on the global leaders like Trump and other people who are influential. But most of the young people are aware of the climate change and we are going to leave climate change issues, but we are not, we need to bring the more strong partnership there and the global table and the participation in the global table that we need this to happen. And um, if we, even if I give the example of how we bring the collaboration, that's also a question because see, I am I'm uh, participating in this uh, conference, online conference or webinars with you guys, but after that, I will not be connected with you. So there's not a meaningful collaboration or partnership here. If I am get connected, if I am being connected with you and see what's happening and what you are guys doing and what I am doing, then comes the partnership and collaboration also. So we need to also think about that. We just attend the online webinars and then we don't get connected. And then becoming leaders and participating in the decision making space uh, spaces that's uh, that's the young uh, we need to have some some more young politicians and young leaders in the discussions table to change the ball game the whole scenario and make the important decisions like paris agreement or climate change ag agreement so yeah that's that okay and uh, that's all from the first breakout room thank you Samantha and sophia for sharing um back to you iris Thanks, Eka, and thanks, Group One, for for that discussion. Let's go to Group Two, Christian. What happened in your group? Hello, everyone. Um, for Group Two, there has been some conversations regarding the three questions that had has been shared. Um, uh, John will be helping me present some of the some of the um, insights that was shared. I will be presenting first 
the one shared by Abby. Uh, let me just share my screen first. There you go. All right. <laughs> there has been quite a few um, um, inputs in the mural itself, but I think there has been um, some conversations throughout um, the, um, the, disc um, the, the session. For the first question, um, inputs from Abby are, youth can feel a demand if they are properly trained and have the ability to access these opportunities. Um, second one is if youth employment programs are not engaging or bring an interest that you have, um, youth will be interested in being actively involved and youth should be engaged in determining how this program look. Um, I was also asked by the, um, by the participants on my insights regarding this. I think um, 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 there will be some impacts in the labor market demand and supply, particularly on the capacity training and um, exploring opportunities if um, young people will be involved in the process. Um, John, and are there any other else um, that I missed um, that was discussed during the first um, question? John? No, I think you're in mute, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. so sorry. Um, I, said, I think you covered it. Um, for the second one, we really looked at um, the respondents about sharing the table versus being invited to the table um, and looking at how uh, development projects and, and strategies really uh, uh, develop that sense of shared responsibility uh, uh, by sharing the table, by not simply looking at inviting young people to the table, but really understanding what are the power dynamics uh, and the entrenched uh, power dynamics that uh, that go into uh, the notion of simply uh, being invited to the table versus sharing the table. And I think that insight from young people really demonstrates the need for young people to be involved in the governance um, and the higher level strategies which influence individual projects, as, as mentioned before. All right, thank you so much for that. I think that's mostly the discussion for the question number two. For number three regarding how can young people successfully influence decision on long-term funding priorities of funders and implementers. Um, we've a bit lacked time for this question, but um, what was discussed is the effective involvement of um, young person, uh, young people in the board of decision makers. Like they are, there's also some conversations of how do we make sure we safeguard them um, uh, in their participation and uh, are we preparing them um, are we um, giving them a safe space um, in these decision-making bodies? Um, those are the things that are mostly discussed with, um, with group two, unless John has anything else to add that I might probably miss. No, I just think yeah, we, 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 I posed a question, where do you draw the line um, in engaging young people um, meaningfully in projects? Uh, uh, because we can overdo it too, just for participation's sake. So it, it, it's a well thought out, it's not just something we, we need to do and we should be doing, but it needs to be done uh, in a very uh, thoughtful and meticulous way. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's all for group number two. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, John and Chan. Um, for group three, let me just share my screen. So building on group one and group two for, for the first question, we put a lot of emphasis on young people are the main actors in the market um, and they are well positioned to know what they need and what consumers might need in that sense. Um, there, was also some there was also some suggestions about seeing young people as the future and seeing them with the need to invest in them as well. Um, the most striking sentence here is on the post-it um, here what says for youth by youth with youth and it really strikes to the core of our our key message which is that nothing for youth without youth um as we're learning from the white paper for for question number two it's interesting that for group two you pointed out having more young people in the boards because we did have a post-it here that says there are youth advisory boards but these aren't enough um and so for, for funders and for implementers and for stakeholders such as ourselves, um, a question that this is making us think is, 
with how much how much um of power or authority the youth advisory boards actually have in the in the governance space and whether these decisions or the, these recommendations are really taken seriously um some of our participants flagged the importance of taking young people seriously um not not only as individuals but also as organizations there are youth organizations um, there are efforts being made by young people to collect, to organize themselves and to engage development partners. Um, and that needs to be factored in. Uh, one of our participants also raised the importance and actually also acknowledged some of the work that funders are doing in terms of having a criteria for, me, for youth engagement in their funding um funding decisions when they give this when they provide funding to organizations and that's helpful at least in addressing question number two but the overall sentiment from our end is that we need to do more than just what we're doing right now for for the last question from our end there are actually different recommendations from from the group one is to be aware of the hierarchy in organizations and how decision making tends to concentrate on top which means if you do have youth staff or youth partners or youth volunteers, they finding out where they are in that particular hierarchy or structure will be very, very important, especially because if they're not in the space where power is um, contained, then they may not be able to access decision-making in the first place. Um, the other suggestions here is also, like I said, providing more opportunities for youth organizations. Um, conducting youth-led research, including diverse youth voices, um, getting young people involved in projects, and directly communicating with them on their current needs. Um, the, one of the other posts from our end is what youth need to succeed needs to be provided because this impacts what other generations will be needing uh, from these older groups of young people. So mm -hmm. those, those were actually very interesting insights um, that we wanted to share with the plenary. And I think at this point, we have reached the end of our plenary. And I'm just trying to figure out how to switch my screen to this. We want to thank everyone for their uh, participation today and for listening to the preliminary reflections um, on the white paper and roadmap. The next steps from, from Plan International will be to complete this white paper and roadmap. As John said, we're anticipating this sometime in October with um, continuous feedback and guidance from the Youth Employment Funders Group and City Foundation who have been involved in this every step of the way. Um, on, from, on behalf of Christian, Eka, and myself, thank you so much for participating in the breakout groups. Um, and I turn this back to John um, for any closing remarks from your end. No, I think this topic it continues to gain traction and one that uh, is close to all of our hearts. Um, and I think it can be so overwhelming um, as well. And I think uh, that we need to stop and listen uh, again and look and listen. And, and what is the one thing that we can do differently <clears throat> that really makes a difference? Um, and engaging uh, young people in the programs that we uh, that we fund and that we uh, operate. It just has to be one thing, and that one thing can lead to another. So uh, it's important for us to, again, stress, uh, if you have additional information, or you have additional um, case studies you'd like to share with us, um, there's still time to impact this research. Um, we'll just be starting uh, the final stage of the analysis of the data. And so we're going to use the information from here um, to inform um, those outcomes. And we look forward to sharing those with you um, at the end of um, August and the roadmap ahead uh, for raising youth voices uh, through the Global Funders Group and City uh, City Bank. Thank you so much, everyone, and thanks for making sense for the opportunity. Bye bye now. Great. Thank you, everyone, and thank you to the uh, Planner National team. Just a reminder: all of the resources will be posted on the summit page, so you can access them there. Um, so we look forward to reconnecting in future Global Youth Economic Opportunity Summits. Thank you all. <laughs>